Now you're going to come up against Rashid Khan tomorrow. And you bested him before at the qualifiers in 2018 and had the chance to play him in June this year in the T20 blast. Uh, blast. What's the key to bat against him in this format, especially on such pitches that tend to favour spinners a lot? First thing, I think it'll be a challenge against all the spinners. Um, I think everyone understands the, the attack that Afghanistan have got with three world-class spinners in there. I think, I think the biggest thing is you have to try and put pressure back on them. I think if, like all the the top class teams that you play against, if you let let the bowlers just bowl at you, they'll be they would, their skills will be too good for you over a period. So I think you have to find a method of putting the pressure back on them, whether that be with sweeping or, or coming down the wicket, whatever your method is a batter. And I think you've got to be you've got to stick to it and and be pretty disciplined to go with it. Thank you. Right. Next question. Okay. If if there are no questions from the pre- oh, so Dipto, go ahead. I was going to ask a question instead. So Dipto, go ahead. Thanks, Kethi. Uh, hi, Callum. Uh, you you had a very very good uh, you know performance. The team had a very good performance in the initial round. Uh, how do you rate, you know, uh, your chances overall against uh, Afghanistan team? I think I think the good thing of having the um, first round is that we've come in with confidence. We've obviously topped that group, um, played three good hard games of cricket. Um, so I think we'll come into the game with confidence. Obviously, I think it'll be Afghanistan's first game in the tournament, and we can we can hopefully go in there and put some pressure on them. Um, I said it before they start the first round. We feel we've got a batting unit, you know, filled with some exciting, powerful players, and we just hope that we'll be able to showcase that and go out and um, just because we're now into the Super Twelves, I don't think that changes much for us. I think we'll come and play the the aggressive type of cricket we want to play. So, Gary. Yeah, hi, Callum. Um, you know, obviously heard, you know, in your group there's a lot of experience, but can you just maybe touch on, you know, Shane and Kyle's kind of relationship and how that kind of leadership works with the group? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great combo. Um, they try and keep things as relaxed as possible. Um, obviously out here and specifically this tour in the bubble and the bubble life in hotels, they've made sure that, that we've all been able to do our own things, find ways of enjoying things and, um, that we want to do so when we get to the cricket it's a nice relaxed uh, atmosphere um i think that's been one of the one of the best things they've done they've managed to keep it fun and um every time we turn up at the ground everyone's just raring to go um and, and on top of that they've they found a way of, of giving everyone a role and a real clarity to go out there and play play the, the way that we need to for the team um and i think that's shown so far guys have come in you look at the way that Chris Greaves and Michael Lee specifically have taken to their roles. I think that's been it's been brilliant, and I think that comes from the confidence that Shane and uh, Kyle have given them. Thanks. Thank you, Saya from Telegraph. Saya, Saya, can you hear us? Sayak, if you have a question, Hello? please un- unmute yeah. yourself. Yes, okay. Yeah. Hi, Callum. Callum, uh, uh, you know, uh, so how significant has uh, this qualification to the uh, super, uh, super 12 stage of uh, of this T20 World Cup been for the whole team? I think it's hugely significant, not just for the team, but for the organisation and some of the aspirations that Cricket Scotland have. I mean, we want to be the leading associate and we want to be, we want to push our case to be the next full member. And I think, um, if you look specifically at the way uh, Afghanistan and Ireland did it, they did it from doing well at World Cups and 
I think we've now got five great opportunities to go out and show show world cricket what this organisation and the team's about. And then for the players, it's a great showcase and opportunity to show some of the 2020 skills that this group has um, and, and get them out there on the world stage. And you, you never know what sort of opportunities can come in the back of this for some of some of the players if if they have a have, have a good group stage. Thank you, Cal. Saurabh, you're next. Uh, hi, Callum. Um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, from the uh, disappointment of not qualifying for the 2019 World Cup, where you know there was so many close losses and fine margins, uh, to winning all three matches uh, in here and progressing to the next stage, can you just talk to us about the contrast of emotions there and the journey there? Yeah, I, th I think sometimes you need those disappointments to really, to really spur us on. Um, I don't think there's ever been a game of cricket I've thought about as much as that West Indies loss, um, and I think that framed a lot of the way we changed, uh, changed the way we trained, trained in a little bit more specific ways about key moments and winning things. Um, I started with it with Grant, and then Shane's come in and carried that on brilliantly um, to stage now where some of these key moments that happen in games that that we don't even probably think about as much as we might have used to. And I think that shows in the way that we're playing. Guys are playing with so much clarity and, and confidence and a smile on their face that we want those moments. We want to be in those moments and we want to each one of us wants to be the guy that stands up and wins that wins that game for the team. And I think that's just the maturity of the the squads being together for for a for a number of years now that um, we know each other well and we know how each other is going to win the game. So yeah, I think that's just the way the team's matured. Thanks. Any last questions? Okay, that's it then, Callum. One last question from me. Um, I just wanted to know what was the atmosphere back home uh, after the news of the qualification? Yeah, it was amazing, the messages from so many different people. Um, I think I think the whole of Cricket Scotland has been waiting for this sort of moment where we do it on the world stage and show just how good we are and how much passion there is for the game in Scotland. Um, there's so many clubs and so many different people involved from junior ages all the way up to the senior senior men's and women's teams that have got involved in or pushing this organisation forward, and I think everybody, everybody, was just ecstatic and and excited to see to see us go out onto the Super Twelves and and show what we've show what we've got. And what about the family? Uh, the family were delighted. Um, uh, even if it means <laughs> means being away for a bit longer. Um, yeah, you, uh, mom and dad were. We're obviously very proud, and they've um, they've helped me a lot since since I first started with cricket Scotland at age eleven, uh, and then my wife and my young son were um, yeah they were both delighted as well. Fabulous! I hope they can um, watch you uh, play the play the game tomorrow. Um, I think Malhar has the last question now. Yeah, just the last question. Uh, now, Afghanistan's top order boasts of quite a few big hitters and fast starters, which is key in Sharjah. But at the same time, Scotland bowlers have enjoyed great success in the preliminary uh, round in the power play. Uh, how do you look at that matchup? I think it's going to be a fascinating matchup. Um, I think I, th I think it will help both our batters and challenge our bowlers in a different way. I think a man, um, the pitch was maybe not quite so conducive to um, the power play for the batters. So I think we're going to, as a batting unit, going to have to change quickly to um, what a par score in the power play is going to be. And our bowlers are going to be put under under some different pressure. But I think with the three seamers who we've, we've relied on so far, and even if Mark Watt has to bowl in the power play as well, I think we've got a unit who can swing the ball, who can, who can bowl with different skills that, Hopefully, we'll be able to challenge what is a dangerous Afghanistan top order and, and hopefully come out on top. Yep. Uh, thank you and all the best for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Callum. Good luck. And we'll thank see you, you in charge very soon. Thank you very much.